YouTube friends, this is Roxy, your Fireway Flow, your mom, and in today's video, we are gonna continue on with part two of planning your year in advance. Today we talk all about how I research curriculum, what are the best websites that I use to find curriculum, to purchase curriculum. We are gonna get to it all, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for clicking onto this video today and for joining me here on this series of videos where I am sharing with you how I plan my homeschool year in advance. And I'm doing it all as I do these videos, which is like the coolest thing because I'm actually going to be taking you step by step in how I do all of it. And um, it's great because last time I shared with you in part one of my video, I went through why it is that I plan my year in advance. So if you have not watched part one of my video, please make sure you do that before watching this one because it kind of all works in sequential order. So it will be helpful when you are looking at doing what I'm doing, which is planning my homeschool year in advance. I have been doing this since the beginning of when I started homeschooling. Short answer is because of the fact that I do work and homeschool and have a very busy life. And so I like to have my homeschool running on autopilot so that I don't have to figure out what it is every Sunday night prior to the week beginning, what I'm going to be teaching that week or what we're going to be covering that week. So it's really important that I take the time in the summer while my kids are on break to get all of my homeschool plans in order. So Today's video is going to be an extension of part one, and we're going to kind of go into a little bit more depth as to how I go through this process of choosing curriculum. Now, remember, choosing curriculum is the first thing that I do. I like to finalize what I am doing for my curriculum for the most part at the beginning because that is the bones of my homeschool. That is what frames out what our homeschool is going to be. Because then from there, I can come up with my uh, roadmap on how I'm gonna get all of those lessons done. I'm able to figure out how many weeks of homeschooling I'm gonna do. I can use that also to figure out what my kids' schedules are going to be for the homeschool year. So all of it kind of is surrounded by what my curriculum choices are and how that breaks down. Part one of my video, I shared with you some Excel sheets that I use to plan my uh, homeschool curriculum, and they are called Courses of Study, and I have had a lot of comments on that video and some messages regarding me providing copies of those documents. Make sure that you stay tuned to this video, these videos that I'm putting up because I am gonna be providing a way for you to have access to that. I'm just getting that ready. I didn't think that my um, that the requests would be so overwhelming as to how many people want some of these forms that I use. So I am going to be preparing that for you guys and I'm also gonna be preparing a master checklist on how you can prepare your entire homeschool year in advance and how to do it in a timeline form. So I am getting all of those things together. So just be patient with me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you're following me along because in one of those videos, I will be announcing when those documents will be ready for those of you who would like to have access to them. So uh, today in part two, we're gonna kind of talk about um, what my process is when I am choosing curriculum. The, in the, the sheet that I showed you guys in the last video, I don't fill out like in one day. It takes me a process of about two to three weeks to get those sheets finalized. And so what is it that I am doing to get those sheets completed? And that's what I'm gonna cover today. So the first thing that I wanted to tell you is during this time period, this is what I call my brainstorming period, okay? Um, I, this is the time where I start brainstorming curriculum. Now, for the most part, I don't really change a lot of my curriculum that I've been using. I usually try to stick with the same thing. I go to the next level or I go to the next volume or whatever. So typically I don't make changes, but my kids are changing, you know, as they get older, they go into from elementary to middle school or they go from, you know, middle school to high school or lower elementary to upper elementary. And so definitely I am always evaluating. I'm always seeing what is working, what is not working. And we do make some new additions and changes throughout our, um, from year to year. So 
Um, I do like to, I do have some research that I am still doing, even though I'm entering in to my fifth year of homeschooling. So what I like to do is I like to, for purposes of researching curriculum, I start with YouTube. Okay. I love YouTube. It is my favorite resource for researching curriculum and what the curriculum, how it works and whether or not it's a good fit for my family. The reason why I love YouTube is because I can take YouTube around with me on my phone while I'm folding laundry, while I'm doing dishes, while I'm doing things around the house. And I can watch these videos where homeschool moms like me are going through curriculum, having um, the curriculum opened up, showing it to you, giving you the pros and cons, having flip throughs of the curriculum where they're actually putting the camera on the pages. This is awesome. It saves me time because they're actually, you know, making these videos just focusing on one or two curriculums at a time. So I don't have to go through like an entire video to see um, and also what's great is it prevents me from having to order curriculum so that I can have it in my hands to flip through it and then having to pay all of those shipping fees. So I really love to have the, these curriculum videos that people post on YouTube because it helps me to look at curriculum and, and really make an informed decision as to whether or not these curriculum uh, choices work. Now. What are some of the YouTube mamas that I follow uh, when I am looking at curriculum? I am going to give you a list in the description box below of homeschool mamas that are in this YouTube community that I consider like my tried and true people that really do a great job in evaluating curriculum in making good curriculum choices. I just really rely on these people. I love them and I'm gonna share in the description box some of my favorite YouTube channels that share curriculum. They share it not only individually, like for example, if you're looking into a language arts program, they will say, okay, these are my favorite language arts curriculums. They even go more specific than that. If for example, you're looking at Saxon math or you're looking at Singapore math, well, you can find someone that's done a video just on that curriculum. You'll find moms that have used that curriculum for older children, for younger children, so you're able to compare. It's really funny when people start to see that I have my phone and I'm carrying it in like from room to room while I'm cooking dinner and they hear like the YouTube videos of curriculum, they're like, oh boy, this is a, uh, you know, it's brainstorming time for next year. Everybody in my family knows it's a whole joke that they're like, okay, this is the time where, where you know, mom's gonna be on YouTube for most of the time. Um, and, and it's because I'm looking and researching figuring out another thing that's great too with YouTube is you can figure out what new curriculum is out there what is out there that um, is coming out fresh new new unit studies new things like that and so I spend like two or three weeks literally binge watching these kinds of YouTube channels and figuring that out they have videos for for example seventh grade curriculum like a grade level like they'll say okay this is my third grade curriculum for the 23 24 school year or this is my uh, seventh grade curriculum so i first start by searching by grade level then i look at kind of like what most of these youtubers are doing pretty much there's a, a lot of consensus uh in in these videos so i start to kind of jot down what those things are uh, what those curriculum choices are. And then I, if I have like a more specific, for example, like let's say one of the videos showed a language arts curriculum that I'm interested in, then I will start to search in the YouTube community for that specific curriculum, okay? So that's what I do for um, for that. And when as I am doing this, I have just a regular notebook, just something like this, and I carry it around with me, a little small notepad. You could use a post-it you know, post notes uh, pad. And I just carry it around with me. I've got my phone, I've got my little notebook, and then I'm just kind of going around and I'm listening. And then if something that I see, I'm like, whoa, I've never checked that out before. I'll write that down. Or if I have some downtime, I will definitely sit down, watch the videos and take notes on them as well. Um, it's, you know, it seems like a daunting process, but really if you're doing it, if you've done it for a long time, you kind of start to recognize homeschool moms that have the same similar learning styles or um, um, homeschool approaches that you may have. So you'll start to see that you, you, it, this process will get streamlined. And what I'll do is when I am looking through brain, when I'm in this brainstorming phase, what I will do is I will have my open notebook here and I will create like little subject headings for each of the subjects. For example, 
um, my subject headings for curriculum are, um, and that this is all in my course of study that I showed you guys, but you may not have seen it, the breakdown of it, but I just wanted to show you what it was. Um, I write down in my notebook, I put subject headings, for example, morning time. Okay, so I like to do, I like to have my kids do some kind of um, devotional, a morning time with God. So I will research curriculum or I will list things in that heading. Then I have a logical and critical thinking area. And that's where I put in some little workbooks that they do. Maybe Friday they'll do one page a day of balance benders or daily higher order thinking from Evan Moore or reading detective or something that kind of gives them a little bit of higher order level thinking stuff that you would need for like, for example, standardized testing. I will have um, curriculum that I will pick for that. Maybe like one or two things. Then I have the handwriting and writing subject. I have math. I have language arts, which language arts obviously can separate into separate sub sub topics, which for me are spelling, grammar, writing, vocabulary, uh, and that's it. Okay. So it would be spelling, writing, grammar, and vocabulary. Reading and literature are different and writing is different. Writing, I put in a different category. Um, uh, it is part of language arts, I understand, but I do like consider it a different um, category because it has its own kind of stuff. It, it requires its own time frame to teach or to have a curriculum for, set up for. Then my next one would be reading uh, slash literature. That's where I put in what if we have a reading curriculum, like for example, we've been doing all about reading for a very long time. My kids love it. Uh, my, my youngest one loves it. And uh, this year she is in level three of all about reading, but I don't think I'm even going to do level four because her reading has improved significantly. And I just want to focus this year on uh, her reading books and giving me comprehension, writing papers on them, brief, you know, little book reports or making maybe creating a lap book. So in this section, as opposed to me putting in a reading curriculum for reading literature, I'm just going to list what she's going to be reading that year and any kind of additional resources that I'm going to use to help test her comprehension on that reading or to help her to be able to create something so that she, we can uh, evaluate whether she understood the main points of the story that she was reading. The next topic that I have is electives. That's where I put in any extracurricular activities uh, that they may be involved in. And this is mainly for my evaluator because these courses of studies that I prepare, I also upload them for my portfolio at the end of the school year. The next topic I have is um, religion and catechesis. So that is where I put in our um, either Bible study that we're going to do that year. We are a Catholic family, so we teach catechesis. So that's where I'll put the curriculum that I'm going to be selecting for that. And then the last subheading that I put in is social studies, history, geography, and science. So that's kind of its own little subheading. So as you can see, um, the headings are in the different colors, and that's what I will end up putting into my course of study. But before I finalize it, I'm just brainstorming in my little notebook. So I'm just putting each of those headings, and then I'm filling in with different choices. Now. Am I going to use all of that at the end of the day? No, it's going to get whittled down um, as I kind of continue to watch more videos, get more acquainted with the curriculum choices, and then kind of make my final decisions as I go from there. So that is what I do um, for kind of that brainstorming phase. So now after I have brainstormed, I will continue to whittle that list down cross things out, I will start comparing. Um, if it's really necessary, because let's say it's something I can't find a YouTube video for, I will try to order that curriculum and return it if I don't, if, if it has a good return policy and I'm able to get my shipping cost back or I'm able to return it free, I will order something and look at it. And that's why we start this process in April because you wanna make sure that you ha have time to be able to, if you don't like something, once you actually get your hands on it, you can ha return that as well. So um, that's the, I get that list and I just start to whittle it down and eventually come up with 
what I'm going to be using for my curriculum. Now, for example, right now we are in the beginning of April. I've only finalized one of my children's core curriculum. I still have my other child, I have morning time, and I have family subjects for fun Fridays to do. So I'm still, like I said, really early in this process. I give myself time, I give myself grace. Obviously, I'm doing other things as I am planning, you know? So this is something where you just take a little bit at a time and you work to it. Um, I don't take swaths of, of days and hours to do it. It's just, you know, in the pockets of my time. I'll go ahead and, you know, and do this. So once I have created my final list, I will then input it into my course of study. And I will put all of that into the Excel sheet and then I will, um, print those out, okay? And once I do that, that's kind of like my final list. Now I am ready to go shopping, okay? And what I typically do is I like to order everything for my core subjects first. So I like to get um, all of that first and then I will order family subjects and then I will order my morning time resources. Now, why do I start with core subjects? Because obviously that's the bulk of my curriculum is the ones that I use specifically for each grade level. So I like to have that in first. That's what I also start planning first as well. And it just takes me a little bit longer to get the other stuff kind of filled in. So I like to order the core curriculum first. Also, for purposes of budget, it kind of splits up the cost of having to spend a lot of money up front in the curriculum. So I like to kind of break it up. And again, that's why I start so early because I have plenty of time to order this stuff to get to, you know, to have that divided over time. Okay. So where do I buy my curriculum? What are some good curriculum places to purchase curriculum? Now, I love to get a good deal. I love to get free shipping. So when you are looking for a curriculum and when you are shopping, make sure that you're trying to find websites that offer free shipping or that offer some kind of discount on shipping because shipping costs can get very, very expensive. And you, you know, if you want to stay in budget, it's really good to try to have that. Now, there are certain websites that will have these like flash deals. And what I recommend when I give you my list of the, the websites that I use, make sure that you subscribe to their email list because they will send emails out. And I know it's annoying to get emails all the time, but I like to put them in a separate folder and check them every couple of weeks to see if there's a flash deal where they're saying, hey, you know, for this week only, free shipping on all curriculum. That's a good time to go ahead and take advantage of that because you'd be surprised how much money that you can save on that. So the three places that I use to shop curriculum are number one, christianbook.com. I love christianbook.com. What I love the most about christianbook.com is that when you are purchasing curriculum on their website, every single curriculum has at least a picture of their table of contents and a couple of excerpts from that curriculum. So I like that. I like to be able to see what I am getting. And if I'm not able to flip through it, at least I could see a table of contents. I also like that because if let's say there's a delay in one of my curriculums coming in, which happened a lot during like 2021, I'm able to get on christianbook.com and actually get the table of contents and use that in my planning, in, in breaking down my lessons in my um, year at a glance, which is another form that I prepare. And that's gonna be in another video. Um, but christianbook.com is great. They have offer free shipping. They offer uh, a lot of coupon codes that you can get and get some like 10 or 15% off on certain items. They have sale, you know, items for sale. So I check there first. That's the first place I go to. I try to order as much as I can on that website. Another website I love is Rainbow Resource. Rainbow Resource is kind of like christianbook.com. It's a homeschool curriculum site and it has a lot of not only curriculum but other resources as well, books, um, book series, things like that. I like Rainbow Resource. The next one I use is Amazon. Um, some of the workbooks that I get, like for example, I get a vocabulary um, workbook for my children. That's how they do vocabulary. It's called 200 and Voc 240 vocabulary words kids need to know grade fill in the blank. I love that workbook. It's one of my favorites. I can only find it on Amazon and it's the cheapest on Amazon. So 
I will use Amazon as well for that. I also use Amazon for our books um, as well if I can't find them like on Thrift Books, which is another great website. Thriftbooks.com is another great website where you can purchase some used curriculum. So for example, if you need a teacher manual for Saxon Math, you can possibly get a teacher manual and then you just have to buy, you know, the student workbook, the consumable books that you need for that curriculum. So I like thrift books as well. Now for additional resources, these are things like morning time warm up worksheets or um, different um, kind of like, for example, I did a lot of centers with my children during their early elementary preschool years. I did a lot of centers. I use certain um, websites on te certain vendors on Teachers Pay Teachers for those resources. So check Teachers Pay Teachers. They have a lot of great stuff. They even have writing curriculum and reading curriculum. One of my favorite uh, people on Teachers Pay Teachers is The Moffat Girls. I will link it in the description box below. They have great, she has great math curriculum, especially for the preschool years. And in fact, I didn't start my children on formal math curriculums until they were about in second and third grade because I literally used the Moffat Girls as our math curriculum because it includes a lot of centers and hands-on practice for math, really teaching the basic concepts. So Teachers Pay Teachers is something I love to go on. Another website I like to use, The Good and the Beautiful, obviously because I use their science units. I love their science units. I love their creative writing journals. I love their, um, what else was it? Oh, they're just their regular books, like their, their books that they have. Um, they have some really cool educational games um, as well. So I love to look and check out The Good and the Beautiful and see if they've got any new science units. I like to use for scripture, Bible study. I like to use Not Consumed Ministry. I also like to use certain websites for seasonal studies. So in our homeschool, we do our morning time basket. And in our morning time basket, we do it on a loop schedule. On Mondays, we focus on something seasonal. And so I get a lot of seasonal studies throughout the year where we learn different things about Halloween or Christmas or Thanksgiving. And these are the websites I use for that. I use Etsy. I use morning time plans from Pam Barnhill, who's a fantastic homeschool mom. She does great, great curriculum and morning time plans. I, that's on Pam Barn, pambarnhill.com. I use gather rounds for seasonal unit studies and campfire curriculums. Those are kind of like the big ones that I look through just to see if there's anything new and if there's anything that would appeal to our homeschool and to what we want and what our theme for that year is going to be. That's pretty much it as far as my tips and tricks for ordering curriculum. If there is any other tips and tricks that you or any other websites that you purchase curriculum, please feel free to comment in the description box below. Let's help each other. Let's be a community and help each other with resources. And um, I will be doing the same. So if you have anything that you would like to share that you think would be great um, for supplementing any other curriculum resources, let me know. But basically, I go through this process I begin to order the curriculum. So I order, like I said, I order the core stuff first. I Once I have ordered it, what I will do is I will highlight in yellow what I have already ordered. So if I place the order, I highlight it in yellow. I put in the notes here in the notes section. I will put what day I ordered it and when it's supposed to be shipped by and then I kind of track that as I go. Once the curriculum comes in, I will then go back and put a green highlighter over it and that means it's in, it's in my hands, ready to go. Um, and so that's it. That is part two of curriculum tips and tricks, where to find it, how to research it, how to choose what you like. Now, if you are a new homeschooler and you have no idea how to even think about what kind of curriculum you would want, check out my brainstorming curriculum video, which I did years ago uh, for new homeschooling families. It's great, has a lot of resources there and kind of goes step by step with figuring out what your homeschool style is and kind of going from there. And I go through each of the different homeschool learning styles, whether it be Charlotte Mason or classical, I kind of go through that in that video, all right? So what is gonna be for part three? Oh goodness, what, this is gonna be exciting. Well. 
Part three of this next video that is going to be planning your year in advance, I am going to show you my homeschool Bible, my big binder where I start to formulate the year. So I will show you how I organize my big homeschool binder. I will show you how I do my attendance plans. So what are the days that we're gonna have school? What are the days we're gonna have off? I have another great, great resource for that. And so I go into, okay, once we've got our curriculum, now what are the days of the year we're gonna homeschool? What, when are we gonna homeschool? How many days a week? How is that gonna work? What days are we gonna take off? That's gonna be what we do next in the planning process. So again, stay tuned. I've got tons of videos to come in this series. I'm super excited. Let's plan our homeschool year in advance. Let's be organized and come along with me on this journey. Thank you so much for watching and take care. Happy homeschooling, bye-bye. Everything's moving slower